She's good now. Primer's on. So now, just got to put the guide coat on. And basically, we are going to prep this whole front. I'm going to paint it. You know, we have to paint this, we have to paint this, firewall, around the windows. So I'm just going to paint the whole front here. And of course, we've got to do the interior and get that all painted and spruced up. So lots of sanding now, just sanding for, uh, for paint. It's going to be a big job. It's hot out, but I like it. So I put it back on the rotisserie and just simply because sanding this roof when it's not on the rotisserie is a big, big job. So if I can do it while it's on the rotisserie, it's going to save about two hours worth of work, maybe an hour and a half. But it'll also allow me to get in here and recock everything and it'll be a lot more easy and it'll just turn out better. So what I'm going to do is sand this. I'm just going to use my orbital, some 220, and then I'll block it with 320. You know, it's just the roof, and it'll turn out perfect. It'll look good. All right, I guess I need some air. Once it's sanded with 220, and then I've got another guide coat on here, this 320 on a block happens really, really quickly. And if you were to just do 320 without doing the 220 first, it would take you forever, and you wouldn't get it as straight as you would if you do it this way. And just with a nice light touch. See, right away, that's absolutely beautiful. Now, of course, I'm going to take this all up, but you know, and then that way, we you know we're not going to get stuff on it or anything like that. But uh, before I paint, I will get up here and give it a little, another light little sand with some 320 in case there's some cooties. Oh yeah, beautiful. So we gotta, we gotta spray around the window here. So I'm gonna prep this as well. And then we'll just put a, you know, masking tape there and just, just get a little bit in there. For the window. And then the, any overspray will sand off later. Tell you one thing, 
This is probably one of the toughest jobs in the world, sand in the interior of a vehicle. But without this rotisserie, I could be a lot worse because then I'd be hanging up this way. It wouldn't be very much fun. sanding part and if you think you're gonna blow through that in like four or five hours you're way off I probably have about uh, 15 16 hours just sanding the stuff that I need the inside I also did the roof because on the rotisserie it's gonna be way way easier I'll just tape that off and it'll be fine and uh, you know when you start doing all the door jams and all these little nicks and crannies you know, you can sand the door out in 20 minutes, but it takes this way, way longer because there's so many little spots to get into. And you gotta be thorough, you know, if you don't want your paint to peel off. So anyway, let's take a look at the inside. As you can see, lots. Oh, there's something real cool I wanted to show you guys. I'll do that. But anyway, we've got the dash all done. The floor is all ready to go. I'm gonna paint that first. I'm gonna paint the floor first, and then we'll paint the rest of it. All right, that was stamped on the inside of the roof. Ford, prime side, and it said 26, our 8-26, I sanded it a little bit out, but I know it was 8. So almost that many years ago <laughs> to this day. Wow. Anyway, whatever primer they used, sucked. Peeled off everywhere. Just give you a bit different view here. Sides all look good. It's going to be... Uh, it's gonna be nice now a lot of work there was a lot of fill in there and all the way along the bottom it just seemed like every spot on this truck had a dent in it now I'm just running a piece of tape about I don't know I guess we're an eighth of an inch from the bottom of the drip rail here you don't want to get your caulking Everywhere. I missed that one. Man. Mosquitoes tonight. I don't know what's going on, but there's lots of them. Spiders aren't doing their job. So then what we do is just run a bead of caulk in here. Uh, you're doing a resto, you gotta make sure that you you know you buff all this stuff out of here because it's gonna be dry, cracking, and you want to replace it. It's not the funnest job in the whole world, trust me. But, it's got to be done. And we're just trying to make sure we don't get it all over the place, that's all. Because then you have to clean it up. Alright, let's get some caulking. Alright, to put this stuff in, I just put a fairly nice bead in there. Not too heavy. Now I find that it works better if I do two coats of this. I'll do one tomorrow after it dries. Then, you wet your finger really, really well with some thinner. And then you just come in and give her one of these. Just like that, she's done. And tomorrow we'll give her another coat. 
because it'll shrink up a little bit tonight. And then it's uh, gonna grab a rag. Make sure you got lots of rags laying around. Lots of rags. Yeah, it's gonna shrink tonight and put another coat on tomorrow and uh, we'll be good. We're gonna take this tape off though and we'll retape again tomorrow. Well, we gotta caulk all of our seams. And this is one of the jobs that I just dread. It's not much fun, but has to be done. So, I just tape all my seams. Usually you have to do them twice because that seam seater shrinks up pretty good. Okay, let me get my uh, stuff. Now this is just a adhesive sealant, sure seal. That's what I'm using. And you just give her a little shot. And you don't have to be pretty here. Got to make sure you rub it in there. A little bit up the top there. And then what I do? The camera wasn't in the way, you know. I'd have a little bit nicer. Thing there. And I just take a spatula. I come down, take the excess off. And I take a little thinner on my finger. Let's, uh, let's bring that down a little bit. Because if you don't, you're going to have a, quite an excess there. And the thinner, what you're doing is you're just contouring everything really nice. Okay. And don't worry about putting too much thinner on your finger because then it'll just make everything slide nice. And if you got a bump, you can actually just rub it out. We'll pull this off. Put this somewhere where it's going to get on your shoe. Probably an edge right here. So then we're gonna just work it down. Make sure you get lots of thinner on there. And then you can just make sure that edge is gone when you feel it nice and smooth. And good. Oh, it feels, looks pretty good. Just like that. Like I said, it'll shrink a little bit. I'll come back and uh, we'll hit her again. And then she'll be beautiful. I'm just going to go around and do some of these other ones. And we've got quite a bit to do in the cab, but Take your time, get them done. And if you had, let's say you slipped over here, and you got a little bit of residual, you just wipe it off. And, and this stuff, you can wipe this off tomorrow. If you miss a spot or whatever, you don't worry about it. But uh, I'm just using paint thinner here. I'm not using no lacquer thinners or anything like that. So, all right, on the next one. All right, I'm taping up the uh, dash here. And the firewall, the hole works. All right, how does that go?
Here, paint is a medium gray. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go, uh, two parts light gray and then one part black. We're gonna see what that looks like. I don't know how it's gonna cover, but that'll, uh, that'll get the, uh, get this a lot closer to what the paint is. Oh yeah, that's gonna work out really good. So, two parts gray, one part black. I think that's gonna work out really, really good. Now, got a new policy. Sorry, but you're not gonna be uh, seeing me spray anymore. Just a little bit too hard on my uh, my camera, and yeah, cameras are expensive, so that's all right. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. <laughs> all right, I'll let the uh, epoxy primer dry up, and I'm just gonna caulk all the spots that need to be done. I cleaned out all out of here, so now I'm gonna replace it all. And around here and uh, let's take your time there are small beads so you don't have to mess with it so much remember if you don't hit her all in one shot and put a little bit more on tomorrow so we're going to let this dry overnight We are going to uh, put the undercoat on. <clears throat> we'll let it dry overnight so that I can tape it all up. I don't think tape will be a very good idea right now. We'll just tape it up. Now, I don't want to undercoat the whole thing because sometimes that just looks a little bit too cheesy. Uh, it doesn't need it and I prefer just to paint everything but this metal here I've uh, fixed a few pinholes and it's pitted up pretty bad. The rust comes from the, this side down so what I want to do is I want to fill some of these pits in case there's any moisture it won't uh, settle in there and once we get that done then this floor will last for a long long time so i'm just going to come up a little ways uh, this little dish in here it's always nice to have some undercoat for some reason this one's a there's there's no rust in here at all i'm just amazed it's in really nice shape but i'm just doing this part here we'll let that set up and then we can throw down some paint I'm just using a paintable undercoat. Make sure it's paintable. You don't want to spray it and put paint over something that's uh, like an asphalt or something like that. So make sure it's paintable. She's all masked up. Looks good. Okay, I'm just going to spray this. Got to take the camera out, move it because I don't want to get any on it. As I will. I know I've had to clean my camera a couple times now, so. So the system I'm using on this one is uh, automotive art. So I'm using a base and then the uh, 40 or 8241. They don't call it that anymore. It's uh, so let me look. Um, 8242. That's the clear I'm using. Two to one, one to one. Uh, I like the system and it, it's inexpensive. And well, it's still very expensive, but it's a little cheaper than uh, some of the alternatives. Seems to work well for me. So we just gotta let that. Uh, Undercoat set up a little bit more, 
and then uh, we're going to hit her with the uh, paint. Shouldn't take too long now. I'm just finishing up the uh, seam sealing right now. Now I want to do this edge right here. Now I didn't do that at the same time as this because I had to tape this. And one thing you never do is tape over a fresh uh, um, seam sealer because it'll come off. Stick to your tape forever. Just put a real thin little bead in there. Force it into the crack a little bit there. Now you got some openings down here. You don't want to see them seal those up. That's where the water runs if there's going to be any. So then, I'm going to just wet our finger here. Some uh, paint thinner. Just, just give it a real light one. Don't go too heavy, because then you push it all out and then you won't have anything. Oh, the mosquitoes are just unbelievable right now. A little bit more right there. And I'm going to put a little bit right in here. Just a little bit at the bottom. Beautiful. That'll dry overnight because we're still letting our... I don't want to tape this stuff up today. So I'm going to repaint this. So I'll tape over this way and then this will get re-sprayed. Re re so we're not going to be taping or uh, ta yeah, taping up against the uh, caulking. Okay, I'm going to show you these, these ones up here one more time here. All right, put my tape up. Now we've done these once, but when you run this seam sealer, it uh, she shrinks pretty good. So it usually takes a couple coats. And then what I'll do is just take a an old spatula here, and I'll just get rid of the excess. Then I'll take off a little bit more with uh, my finger and we're going to even it out here. Don't worry about getting any uh, thinner on there, it's not going to hurt nothing. And you want this to be as smooth and wet as possible. Okay, and then what you can do is peel this off. Everyone thinks that that's where you can stop. You know, that looks pretty good, but we've got a little edge, a little edge on it. 
So what you can do, works really, really well, is wet a piece of paper towel, and then you can use that to contour it a little bit if it's a little too high. Okay, and that's gonna knock down the edges. Make sure she's good and wet though. This stuff can be manipulated quite nicely. And then at the end, just finish it off with your finger. And that is as smooth as it can get. And if you get a little residue on the side, you know, there's a little tiny piece right there. Well, I'm not going to uh, use my rag and wipe that off because I might damage my, my job that I just did. I'll come back tomorrow and it'll just wipe right off. Some thinner, like right here. Floor looks great. Time to start masking it up now. Of course, some people would say, ah, oh, it's just a floor, just leave it. No, you want everything, you know, to look as good as you can do it. Some pride. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's one of those things, you know, what I found is the cleaner, the neater everything is, the more you want to work on it. Because you're excited. I'll just bring that up. Huh, wonder where that piece of tape come from. All of a sudden I got a chunk of tape on here. Gotta figure out what I did. Oh. Okay. For some reason, I'll have to get up there and then uh, we do some of this stuff. That's all right. It's all fun. <laughs> I got a mask up up here, so we've got the roof, the seam that I have yet to uh, seam seal yet. So I want to come down about an inch, and what I'm doing is I'm coming down to a point where it's going to be easy to uh, to sand. I don't want to have to sand when it's you know really close to the groove or anything like that. But if it's out in the middle, you know that little tiny bit of overspray that'll be there, because I'm just gonna you know just hit the edge here just so we can get a window seal in there and then just uh, re-block it and it will be good. Yeah, don't forget the uh, glove box and the ashtray. I've got them hung, everything's all ready to go there. And uh, we're just about ready for some sealer. One thing you should do, and I've learned this over the years, so when you're doing calves, make sure you put a piece of uh, cardboard down because you know when your feet get sticky and it just rips this plastic all apart or your paper, whatever you got laying down on the, you know, on your floor. So I put a piece of cardboard in, that way when I'm standing in here, nothing gets ripped up and uh, everything's just better. Tell you what, these are good times. Got the sealer on, looks really good. But I want to get a little bit of undercoat down in the corners here, and that'll help prevent a little bit of uh, corrosion, hopefully, down the road. We did do some welding down there, so 
Just stick a little hose on the end of my gun here and get down in there. So what I like to do, this is the uh, next day. I uh, sealed this last night. And I'm just running over it real lightly with uh, 1200 grit. And this just kind of, there's always just seems like there's a little tiny bit of roughness to it. And this little bit of 1200 grit just takes that roughness away. And you're good to go. Now I'm not going to be doing all of it. Just the stuff that the pork. Doesn't take very long and it's worth it. So what I'm gonna do is, because I gotta do all this spraying inside here first, I'm actually going to lay a piece of paper over top of the dash. That's going to keep all the um, overspray off of it. And then when it comes time to spray in the dash, then I'll, I'll give it a tack. Um, what I've seen in the past, you know, you get all that overspray and it settles down on the dash and then, you know, then you're fighting with it. So that is what I'm going to do. And it worked out really well when I did the uh, cedar yesterday as well. So. But, I'll have the camera outside so you won't be able to see it. It's a little rough on the camera like I said before while I'm spraying so I don't know how those other guys do it on YouTube, you know, when they're spraying something. I have to figure that out. They must have a, well, I guess they got a nice spray boost but not I. Alright. I'm going to mix up some paint and then uh, I'm going to start spraying and we'll catch up to you in a little bit. Well we got her painted. She looks just awesome. I think the color choice is right on spot and everything worked out really really well. It's really hard to paint these interiors because you know you're, you're confined you have to do the back, the up, there's overspray everywhere, and it's a pretty stressful day. But, got her done, so now we can uh, move on, start working on doors and hoods and all the rest of the stuff. I'll show you the firewall in a minute, as soon as I get all this stuff done. and. You can kind of see the, the color a little bit nicer if you, I think if we show you the outside. Well, I think you can see the color a little nicer. I've got the door open. The sun's not shining right now, but that's okay. Anyway, I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful gray. And I think everything's gonna contrast really nice. When we get the chrome on it, it's gonna look really, really good. So I'm going to take the uh, time and I'm just going to uh, undercoat on the inside here. Now I could do it while it's on the truck, but I can save myself a lot of time by doing it right now. So that's what I'm doing. And it's just protection there to prevent any more rust.
Got her strapped down. We're ready to haul her up to the shop and we're going to set it on the frame today. And that'll be it for this episode. We got it painted. This is a big, big job to get to this stage. Um, the cab, it's always the biggest part of the, uh, the whole project. But now that we got that done, now we can start hitting the doors and the hood. And, you know, when it's just small pieces in the shop, things seem to go a little bit faster now. So, we're going to haul her up, get her done, and uh, start sandblasting on some doors today. So thanks for watching this episode. Don't forget to subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And we'll catch up to you next time. Stay tuned.